two years ago, Cartier gave us a parfum version of their very popular men's fragrance declaration. To come forward to 2020, currently, they have just launched Pacha de Cartier Pure Perfume version or Parfum version. And this is a wonderful offering. This is the kind of fragrance that I really like and it's considered an oriental fougere. And yesterday we spoke about Milano Cento for him in the EDP version and EDT version and how they compare. And this is basically an extension of that style of fragrance. So I'm really obsessed with this fragrance. It smells wonderful because not only do I have a fougere and also an oriental style all rolled into one. So if you want to find out about this latest release from Cartier, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in to Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. That's right, we're going to talk about Pacha de Cartier Parfum from Cartier that was recently launched, an amazing offering from this house, the kind of fragrance that I really like, and also focusing on both oriental notes and also fougere notes. We're going to learn all about this one, but if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed to the channel, please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. And that's right, today we're talking about Pacha de Cartier Pure Perfume version, the most concentrated form of uh, fragrance that uh, we are able to buy, especially in you know mass market releases. And I'm glad that Cartier is taking uh, the steps to launch these kind of fragrances for us, especially since Cartier's declaration parfum was such an awesome uh, doing or creation that now we have a, a pure perfume version of the original Pacha de Cartier dating back to 1992. So this is a 2020 launch. It's created by Mathilde Laurent. A 100 ml bottle is $123. As I said, the concentration is pure perfume, so it's not eau de cologne, eau de toilette, eau de parfum, but it's parfum. One of my favorite uh, concentrations in perfume because they tend to last longer. Generally, they do. And this is, again, uh, once again, it's a, a oriental fougere fragrance. So what are oriental fragrances and what are fougere fragrances? I just recently did a video on oriental fragrances. If you haven't caught that, please do. But I, in that video, I do explain uh, the oriental of course and also what oriental fougeres are. Oriental fragrances are typically fragrances that are warm notes, vanilla, resins, balsams, you name it, all those kind of notes sometimes spices, and fougeres are typically focusing on lavender, uh, aromatic herbs um, in patchouli and oak moss and, um, you know, bergamot and things like that. So those are the fougeres, and here we have a combination of both of the, the uh, styles, which is awesome. So for notes, we have in here ambrosinide, sandalwood, a liqueur note, patchouli, labdanum, balsam fir, tonka beans, and benzoin. So here they don't list lavender, and typically it's a it's it's in uh, you know fougere fragrances, but you can substitute it with other notes. And for me, I feel like what they're doing here is substituting with the uh, with the balsam fir note. So it's a very woody green uh, style. Um, Aromatic as well, of course, because you know it has to be in that the direction. But I feel like the balsam fir adds this like aromatic green woody quality to the fragrance. But of course, you've got labdanum here, and labdanum is typically used to create an amber accord, and it's usually present in oriental fragrances. And we have that here along with benzoin because labdanum on its own is very smoky and uh, gummy, and y you add this like a vanilla touch to it either by adding vanilla or benzoin. So they've added the benzoin in here, which is is quite wonderful. So they have this note called ambrosinide in here. It's a creation or a note, synthetic note from the uh, brand Simri's or Simrise. It's a house that creates uh, notes and uh, smells and flavors and things like that. So ambrosinide by Simrise is a very sharp ambery, woody ambery, extremely powerful woody ambery note, slightly peppery with a hint of ambergris and musk. So that actually does wonders to this fragrance because not only do you have the labdanum and the uh, benzoin in here, you're actually like elevating and amplifying those notes with the addition of the ambrosinide in here. So for me, I just want to mention that I wore Pacha de Cartier back in the early 90s. It was one of my favorite fragrances, but I only wore one bottle of it. 
And I moved on. For some reason, Cartier is not one of the houses that are like, wow, it's a house like Dior or Mugler or Chanel or something or Tom Ford. Uh, it's kind of a house like Van Cleef and Arpels. It's uh, Lalique. They're kind of in the background. They're not like the biggest hyped brands. But I really loved and enjoyed that uh, fougere, the aromatic woody fougere fragrance of Pasha de Cartier. Now, they have done many flankers for this fragrance. I think they did an additional flanker in the 90s, towards the end of the 90s. Then going forward, like at least 10 to 15 years, then they've uh, added a sport version of this, and then they've also got a Edition Noir. I enjoyed Edition Noir. I didn't really care for the sport version. I felt like it was nothing at all like the original fragrance. But now what they've given us is taken us back to the 90s, the early 90s when the original came out, but giving it a lot more depth and ambery touches and of course oriental touches, which is what I really like here. So it says there's a liqueur note because um, the fragrance is quite boozy. There are boozy touches here, and I love that about this fragrance. The boozy touches gives you a, uh, an addition an extra benefit of having an oriental, you know, the warm notes and all that things, uh, all those types of notes, the resins and balsams and things like that. And then you're getting this liqueur nut, but you can't really distinguish what kind of liqueur it is, but I think it's kind of like a cross between rum, whiskey, cognac, all rolled into one. It's really not distinguishable, but you can actually tell it's boozy. And I love that part about it. So not only do I have an oriental here, I have a fougere, plus it's boozy. That's amazing. Now, one thing they don't credit here for notes, you should also definitely know about, it's the cumin. There is something cumin in the background, not necessarily front, it's back there. And sometimes, those of you that might be uh, sensitive to this note, I love this note and it works here perfectly, you might think that it's just like really overpowering. It's not overpowering, it's there. It's nice to complement and contrast with that booze note or the liqueur note, and it makes for a wonderful uh, wearing experience. Similar to the cumin note that's in Declaration, it's funny that Cartier has two fragrances that they're using um, this cumin note. Um, it's, it's pretty prominent here, but not overly prominent, and it's more in the background rather than in the foreground, so you're not it's not like you're swimming in cumin. It's like you're dabbling in it behind because what's really dominating here is the ambery qualities and also the kind of like fougere qualities because it's a very dark, slightly old school uh, fougere uh, powerhouse type smell, which is really awesome. And I think that's coming from the balsam fir note. So that adds a unique twist to the fragrance. Uh, well, not necessarily unique because it's kind of stuff that I've been used to. It always brings back memories of something like Caron's Yatagan, which uses this note as well. It almost smells like a forest, like a green um, uh, northern hemisphere forest, like a European forest or Canada or even northern uh, North America, or, I mean USA, but uh, it's just that kind of a forest. It, it has that kind of a vibe. But then you have that vibe along with all the booze notes and the oriental notes, which makes for a wonderful experience. And throw in some woody notes, uh, sandalwood, and the experience is very soft and creamy. Um, not like you're swimming in milk because they c it could get like a really milky, but this doesn't go that far. But it is definitely a creamy, very, very smooth and uh, soft, uh, woody experience, which is awesome. I feel like this is a great, great release, uh, guys. It smells great. It takes me back. It takes me forward. I love the notes in here. I love the cumin and how it plays with the liqueur note and also the ambery touches and all the, you know, the um, fougere-like touches. It's 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 a it's a wonderful release and I like revisiting those kind of fragrances that I kind of once wore a lot of or grew up with. It doesn't necessarily stop in the 90s, it kind of goes back to the 80s as well because I was used to these aromatic fougeres or woody uh, aromatic uh, fragrances that I grew up with like Dracar Noir and things like that. So those, those that kind of fragrances since I wore so much of them throughout the 80s and uh, in the early 90s I just have left an impression on me and I love it, those kind of smells and this one actually doesn't disappoint it's it's a wonderful offering in in that you're not only touching the classics you're also uh, you know in, in the modern times you know throwing in the or you know vanillic and ambery notes of the labdanum benzoin and then throwing in the liqueur note it's it's wonderful now the only thing i want to mention is it's one of those fragrances that's not overly loud it's like a little on the subdued side 
so not only is the performance great but it's mostly uh, personal so it doesn't like project too much so people have to get close to you so that it kind of makes it a very very classy experience for me when I'm talking about fragrances that are beast and then like project a lot those are the kind of fragrances I don't find classy because they're just not very like um, they don't they don't come off classy they don't wear classy they're just like loud and it just gets lots of attention so for me for a fragrance to be classy it has to have a certain amount of strength and a certain amount of uh, s subtlety to the fragrance to actually call it a cla classy fragrance it's very masculine and it's very very classy but i think women can totally pull this one off especially since it has those oriental notes and the boozy liqueur notes i think it's wonderful but it is a very very nice uh, fragrance where uh, a gentleman can wear during the day at work and also you know carry over at night and you know you know replenish with a kind of a more of a relaxed um, uh, attire anyway i love this fragrance i love it it's wonderful it's a great offering from cartier once again they've done it the previous one as i said declaration parfum was awesome and now pasha de Car cartier parfum from cartier is also awesome so check it out please just a couple more things here look at the bottle and uh, also the top has this blue kind of jewelry kind of uh design the actual cap is a plasticky so that's kind of cheap but then again we're only paying 123 dollars for this it is on the pricier side of designer fragrances but then it is also a pure perfume so what that means is you have more perfume oils that go into making this fragrance that's why it's on the pricier side anyway those are my thoughts on pasha de cartier parfum let me know your thoughts on this fragrance are you interested in this one have you ever worn the original pasha de cartier or any of its flankers like the edition noir and the sport version let me know and also let me know are you a fan of this house uh this is cartier it's not a, a very hyped house and uh people some people talk about it and some people don't um but let me know i'm uh, as i said this one i was very very excited about and i love this house and this one smells pretty pretty awesome anyway Pasha de Cartier from the House of Cartier. Let me know your thoughts. Put some comments down. Otherwise, please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye, guys. <laughs>